welcome everybody. Starting a workshop on uh, bar table, yeah, can can end, end up wrongly, but uh, yeah. Anyway, it's a pleasure, and uh, thanks for coming on on this uh, workshop. So we will uh, present our biomass app and uh, activities we are doing uh, around this app. It's uh, we started with this. Uh, development of the citizen science app about uh, a year ago and uh, uh, it's also a part of uh, open earth monitor project so we have uh, one use case uh, uh, about uh, one part of the application we are developing in open earth monitor project another part of uh, application we are developing on, on uh, a c4c project this is a austrian national project and today we will uh, uh, present uh, uh, the, let's say some preliminary results uh, about the app uh, uh, from our side, from you know, let's say developer sides, and also from our stakeholder, uh, uh, from Sylvia. You 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 see her slides, and she will she tested actually the app in the Amazon rainforest, so it's quite a challenging environment. We we picked up uh, uh, particularly. Uh, uh, this area to test the app uh, because it, we, we hope to get uh, as much as possible feedback for her and with that uh, yeah I'm super happy uh, Sylvia is around it's 6 a.m. in Brazil now so Sylvia thank you very much for for joining that early for you and uh, yeah so we are uh, yeah we are looking forward for your talk thank you very much Melotin thank you so can I start the presentation? Do you see my screen? Uh, we see your screen and you can start. Thank you. And do you hear me well? Yes. Right? Yeah. Great. So thank you very much for the invitation. And good morning, everyone. My name is Silvia, and I am a PhD student at the University of Brasilia under the supervision of Dr. Daniel Vieira, who works at Embrapa. Today, I will be presenting this, our collaboration with Yaza and Dr. Militin on, the, on measuring basal area using GeoQuest app. So as you may know, forests provide a variety of ecosystem services, including biodiversity conservation, carbon storage, climate mitigation, and water regulation, right? So by measuring forest, we can monitor the health and the productivity of these ecosystems, ensuring that their vital services are being maintained. My research group is primarily focused on tropical forests, especially these, forests, these that have passively recovered through natural regeneration or have been actively restored via native species plantations. As you can see in the picture, these forests have a complex structure with different stem sizes. So what exactly do we measure when we monitor a forest area? Typically, we aim to access its structure, composition, and function. To do this, we measure three diameters, three heights, species compositions while checking for the presence of the understory trees, which will ensure that the forest future during the succession process. So using the tree diameter, we calculate the basal area, which is the cross-sectional area of tree trunks in a forest. Together with the height, we estimate the above ground biomass. A forest with a greater biomass, diverse species composition, and the presence of regenerants, we have a forest with a high productivity and a high biodiversity, which in turn supports the continued provision of essential ecosystem services. So the bitter leach method is an alternative technique 
that quickly estimates the basal area without the need to measure each tree individually. This is done by using an instrument called relascope or the bitter leech stick. By looking through the instrument, you include tree trunks that appear larger than the fixed, fixed angle. The number of included trees is used to estimate the basal area. From the average height of the trees around the sampling point, the forest volume and thus the biomass can be estimated. So the GeoQuest app utilizes the camera and built-in tools to implement the bitter leach sampling method digitally. Here in the forest quest section, users can estimate basal area and tree density without the need of a specialized equipment. Here is how it works. When we select the forest quest option, we land on the map page where we can click on our location to indicate the sampling point. And from this point, we are going to spin uh, to perform a 300, uh, 360 degree spin to capture the surrounding trees. The next step, you will select the size of the tree trunk we want to sample from the options at the top left of the screen. It is recommended to use the size that matches with the average trees around you. However, in tropical forest, it's best to select the smaller one. When we start to spin for each tree we see in the screen, we have two options. If the trunk matches the size of this mask that is showing in green, we press the button plus one and a half on the right side of the screen. But if the trunk is greater than the mask, we press the one on the left. So what we are doing now is that we are comparing traditional basal area measurements with the results from the forest quest. We are assessing the accuracy and the consistency between the two methods and evaluating the benefits and the challenges of using the app while for forest mon monitoration, for forest monitoring. In the first trial we had, we measured this plot where you can see in the picture. And we got a, we found a mirror uh, around 60, 26%, sorry, 26%. So what we aim for the future, we expected to develop an automatic bitter leach method so that, that uses pictures of the forest. Through this, we have a great potential to support restoration monitoring across Brazil by helping landowners comply the forest code, which is a Brazilian law. And also they will demonstrate the restoration of, of areas that were degraded, degraded. So thank you very much for the attention. Yeah, so this presentation is, uh, is just to give you a, a bit more uh, background about the app and uh, yeah, uh, Bitterlich method and Forest Quest is just one uh, module of, of, the, of this uh, app that we are developing. So I will, I will just uh, start uh, uh, explaining, uh, like giving a background and, and explaining other parts of the, of the application. So yeah global global carbon budget why is this important yeah it's um, yeah so you 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 know that in in this uh, carbon budget we have uh, uh yeah dif different uh, agents and uh, one is a land carbon sink up, uh, uptake so it's basically how well we 
uh, quantify forest in, in our models to estimate uh, the global carbon budget. And, and you can see it's, yeah, uh, it's, yeah, it's not the problem. <laughs> estimate is okay, but uh, uncertainty is very high. So the, the, num the smaller numbers uh, next to the big number are actually uncertainties around each component. And you can see that, uh, that the carbon sink uh, is associated usually with the highest uh, uncertainty. There are different ways how uh, we can quantify it. One is like a, a forestry way through the bookkeeping tables and, uh, and, and through the fo uh, traditional forestry measurements. Another one is remote sensing. And uh, yeah, when we speak about the remote sensing, it's usually we have a situation as on top of right. Uh, we have many different remote sensing sensors collecting different kind of signals over the vegetation. And uh, then we have to convert this signal to the biomass maps, yeah, to the biomass estimates. But, and to do that, uh, we rely on in situ data, so on in situ measurements. So you can see, for example, here in the very left, those small dots, so those in situ measurements are scarce and we, we don't have many of them. So we, we have to build the kind of the models, as you can see in the middle. And based on that model, then we do the wall-to-wall -wall mapping of the of, of carbon. Yeah. So, of course, uh, yeah. The first thing with the modeling is how your da uh, data are good. That is how your your model is performing as well. So that's why uh, we wanted to uh, actually with this app uh, provide different ways of collecting uh, in situ data for. Uh, um, for biomass, yeah, we know that the forest uh, forestry data are often not open and not available. So, so we are just trying with this app to somehow uh, democratize uh, this way of collecting uh, forestry information uh, around and 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 use it for for better remote sensing based estimates of of, of carbon sinks. Uh, yeah, so this is our aim, so we, we would like to replicate uh, uh, what we, uh, like forestry tools in the app. So I, I would give this aim with a big caveat, we are not going to replace foresters and uh, uh, we are really, we appreciate the forestry measurements. This is well made measurements, well planned, strategically planned, accurate, and with a lot of history. So this data set is, uh, is very important to have. Uh, we are just trying to make uh, uh, some auxiliary data that can support uh, and, uh, and that where we can collect the forestry data even, even outside uh, uh, um, the, the forestry plot and that we can have more open data about that. Yeah, so, so yeah, we, so this is our aim, so not to replace the forestry measurements, but really to, to enable citizens to, to do uh, similar measurements or mimic them. Uh, to do that, so we, we developed this GeoQuest app, and uh, as Sylvia mentioned, so we have a uh, forest quest uh, that she presented already, but we also have a tree quest where you can uh, survey individual tree, uh, the biomass of the individual tree, and uh, it's also very relevant for uh, for trees outside the forest and for, for yeah, urban environments. Uh, we, we are also developing different quests, so different campaigns. So on top, you can see the campaigns where we already have predefined locations of the trees and we measure them uh, with terrestrial laser scanning or, or like with forestry uh, measurements. And then we ask uh, citizens to go there and like do basically calibration of our app. Uh, this is what we done yesterday for the Open Earth Monitor 2024. Uh, 2024 tree and uh, yeah for for the campaign uh, but we we have those opportunistic uh, campaigns that you can for example tree quest you can just open the app see in the map where is the tree you survey and then you survey it collect and and upload uh, this is how the the app look like so it always starts with the description of the campaign so what is the aim what what the user should do then the next uh, window is a map 
sometimes, as I said, we have mapped trees there. Sometimes it's just a map where uh, the user has to digitize or just press on, on a location uh, where, uh, where he or she is, is measuring. And then uh, the app is coming, and, and here you can see how the uh, this is a tree quest, so measuring individual trees, and, and the user then can uh, fit the uh, basal area, so like fit the circle, measure the height, get the volume, and, and then there is a, we are connected uh, uh, directly to the plant net, so the user can take the uh, photo and uh, uh, recognize the tree species based on, on, on plant net uh, API. Uh, and at the end, uh, there is a survey about the tree uh, um, that the user should uh, uh, fulfill. Uh, everything works on augmented reality, so we, we really use the 3D points from, from images, so it's like so-called structure from motion. So you can see those points, like th those are the yellow points all around. And uh, at the beginning of the process, we always identify one point, the seed point usually, so if, uh, at, at the breast height, so th this is the way how foresters are using it. And then based on this seed point, uh, uh, we, uh, we do all our measurements, or so like relative measurements and computation inside of the app that is, uh, yeah, of course, masked. Uh, the user is not aware of that, but this, this is what happened in the background. So there are two approaches to, to measure the uh, Basal area, so one is automatic approach. You, you can see it on the top. So once you select the seed point, uh, there is, uh, uh, we introduce the small vertical buffer and select all feature points in within this vertical buffer on a tree and, uh, and then simply fit the circle to, to those points. So you, you can see those red points there selected and, uh, and the circle fitted. Another approach is a manual approach uh, where, uh, where we have this, uh, there is a, you here on the bottom image on the right side of the trunk, we, we have like a vertical white line. So we ask user just to align left and right and, and basically digitize the, uh, the tree diameter and based on, on some simple geometry, we, we uh, recalculate the diameter of, of measured trees. And yeah, so there, there are different advantages and disadvantages. Yes, sometimes you have, um, there is a case where, where we have a lot of lateral branches around, so the manual measurement can, can easily resolve those cases than, than the automatic. So we still keep both method and, and evaluating what is the what is better one. After that, we ask user to, to point to the bottom of the tree. Uh, and uh, then to the top of the tree. So here I, I just illustrated up to the first living branch measurement, but yeah, usually in our campaign we ask uh, users to, to measure up to the top of the tree. So, and then we have a height and, and based, based, oops, sorry, uh, based, based on this height uh, and, and the basal area, we fit the volume and then this is how we get the, uh, the, the volume of the tree. And at the end, all the measurements and results end up on our web page, so uh, the user uh, can register and, uh, and then upload all the measurements to, to our common web page where other people can explore it. So at the moment, uh, we, uh, we, we want that all data will be open, uh, free and openly available. At the, at the moment, in, in I think this year it's still the user can only download their own data, but uh, I think uh, very soon we will open the whole uh, data to everybody to download and, and, and use for, uh, for modeling. And this is, this is how this Luxembourg Park campaign looks like. So we had about 45 trees actually all around here, so like, we can even see some of those trees there. Uh, we have 23 participants on uh, uh, this summer on, on GeoOpenHack. They took the app and, and went around and, and started collecting the measurements, and we introduced uh, a kind of a score, so uh, as if, uh, and, and rank them according uh, the quality of their measurements and then distributed some prices for people. So we already collected some and done some first uh, campaigns with, uh, uh, with the app. 
Uh, yeah, this is our reference data sets what, that we used in the Luxembourg campaign. So, uh, so colleagues from Technical University of Vienna came with the terrestrial laser scanner. They, they scan all 45 trees and they also developed a pretty cool uh, 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 3D model reconstruction. Uh, they, they also mentioned that uh, they, they started comparing this 3D uh, modeling approach from point clouds with uh, existing ones and apparently this is uh, their approach is performing uh, better yeah the, so the, I think they are up to the paper to to describe that and on top of that we also do the forestry uh, uh, the classical uh, 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 forest inventory like uh, measurements with the tape uh, uh, range finder and uh, GPS and so on so 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 this is how we collect our reference data. Some preliminary results uh, uh, actually show us for, for the DBH, uh, uh, for the diameter of the breast height. Uh, so we, we have uh, like R squares more than 90, 95%, which is very good. And, but, uh, but the root mean square error, yeah, in, in our analysis, we find out it's about uh, five centimeters. Theo Vienna also done uh, uh, their own testings on the different test sites in Vienna and they found it as two centimeters, which is quite encouraging. Uh, uh, and uh, the height measurements, they are not so accurate, but I think still okay. Up, uh, so <laughs> and, and we actually got, again, different results. So in this case, Yaza got better results, about two meter uh, error. And Theo Vienna had about 3.5, uh, almost 4 meter error, uh, and R squares were well, yeah, larger than 70%. Than yeah, uh, in Atel Vienna, it's about 60%. So, yeah, but those are very preliminary results. So, we are, we are extending this uh, analysis now and, and writing a paper on that. So, very soon we will. Uh, published all, all, all the results about that, yeah. And, and this is uh, just a slide uh, about uh, the last, the, the yesterday campaign, so we, we just wanted to make more dynamic for this uh, uh, workshop and see uh, really uh, how accurate we can, uh, uh, we can measure the single tree, uh, the biomass of the single tree, and as, as I understood, and, and so on a leaderboard. So uh, one, one user, actually the winner, managed to measure it with 11% uh, accuracy, which is, I think it's amazing, you know, but uh, I think 11% was quite the exception. Uh, so I, I saw also user having like 20, uh, like 15, 25% uh, accuracy, like even 50%. So it's very diverse, uh, it can be different. So this is also like, uh, like for us in the future to, to think about how to deal with this diversity of, 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 of data coming from citizens. Yeah, that's, that's about the app. And uh, yeah, so I open floor for questions and discussion.